Hello, everyone. My name is Shireen Shahawi. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing here at Ocean View. Um, we are very happy to have you here today. I wish we could have you here in person. It's a beautiful day in Southern Maine today. Um, I know some of you are joining us not from Maine, so I'm just assuring you that we do have beautiful spring days in Maine, and they've, they've started. Although I did think I heard a little bit about snow this weekend. I don't know. I hope not. Um, this is a very uh, worthwhile presentation that we know it's a worthwhile presentation because we use this presentation so much in the months between when it occur occurs each year. In the past, we have been able to do it in person. We decided we would do one more year on Zoom and fingers crossed, we'll be able to be in person with people next year around this time. But what we find is that people who are considering moving to Ocean View at Falmouth or Cumberland Crossing by Ocean View find all of the information that our speakers bring to this event very helpful as they plot their way through what a move from um, your private home into a retirement community can look like. Um, as you know, if you're on this call, you probably know some about Ocean View. We have a beautiful campus here in Falmouth um, on 80 acres, um, beautifully maintained and landscaped and people love living here, whether they're in an apartment or a cottage. We also have in the last few years started a new uh, community in Cumberland, just a few, I think by the way the crow, crow flies, as they say, it's five or six miles away from our Ocean View campus and it's all independent cottages. Our goal is to bring maintenance free living to the people who come and live with us. And it's a beautiful thing. I saw Liz's eyes go up, so I didn't know, but because her her cohort is here, her co-host is here. So I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of who we have joining us today. Um, we have Simply Sized Home, uh, that will speak to us a little bit about that whole process of downsizing, um, which is something I know I hear in my role in sales and marketing is one of the hardest things for people to wrap their head around moving from a large home to a smaller space. And um, Kim and Liz will be great help with that. We have Sandra Wendland here from Legacy Property Sotheby's, and she will walk through the whole real estate process. She'll give us a quick update on what's going on in the market right now, just for um, keeping people up to date. And then we have Jean Libby from Bath Savings Institution to talk about the financial side. I have to admit that is one of the other biggest quit. I get how do I downsize and how do I make the money work questions all the time. Um, so Jean will follow in that third position. And then we have Preston Hughes from Bisson Moving and Storage. I see the truck here quite often during the year. Um, Preston will walk through things you need to think about when you're, you're planning your move. And obviously some of you don't live in the Southern Maine area, but Preston will give great advice to you, whether you're coming from Colorado or California um, from or from New Hampshire, it, you know, wherever you're coming from. Um, and I know we have people on the call that are um, already signed up and know that they're moving very soon. So what I'm going to encourage people to do is at the bottom of your screen, you'll see something called Q&A. It's just a little icon at the bottom of your screen. We're going to ask each of our speakers to speak for about 15 minutes, right around there, and then we'll open it up to questions. And what I'm going to do so that they don't have to be focusing on the questions being typed into the system is I will feed them those questions after they're done speaking. So please just use that Q&A feature to send your questions and I will ask, ask them and we'll give an opportunity after each speaker and then we'll give an opportunity at the very end in case something occurs to you that you didn't ask the, a speaker who spoke a few positions before the last one. So without further ado, let me introduce to you, and I'll ask my other speakers to turn off their video and their sound. They're already off on their sound, but um, I'm going to introduce to you Liz Pattison and Kim Dorsky, um, sisters who own this fabulous company called Simply Sized Home in Yarmouth. And I think that they started their company because they went through this process for their parents, I believe is what I've heard. And they realize just how much it helps to have someone walk you through what it looks like to downsize from something larger to something smaller. And I'm, I'm reading the, the notes here. That, um, Liz brings um, the organizational skills and lots of energy because she was formerly a second grade teacher, which to me means that she can, she's the energizer bunny of people because second graders are busy. Um, Kim has a retail and a marketing and a project management background. So she brings that to the whole equation. So I'm going to let them go talk now and present 
how they walk their customers through this whole downsizing process. Ladies, thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all for coming and thank you to Ocean View and Cumberland Crossing for having us again. My name is Liz Pattison and this is my sister Kim Dorsky. And we started Simply Size Home 11 years ago. Um, we were in a situation where our parents were looking to downsize and move. So we actually went up to their attic uh, where they asked us repeatedly to take our stuff out of their attic. And that may resonate with some of you. So finally we went over and hours and hours later of going through our camp letters and our yearbooks and everything we had collected for the first 25 years of our lives. And uh, we went downstairs and my mother said, are you getting rid of it all? And I said, I'm going to move it to my attic. And she said, you're not getting rid of any of it. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. It's too important. It has all these memories attached and I can't seem to part with anything. So Liz and I uh, started thinking <laughs> and uh, thought that there may be some value in helping people uh, do this. It's really hard to get rid of your own stuff, but it's easier when we are working with people to help them part with things, um, capture the memory in a different way, bring uh, with them what is important, get to family members things that uh, can live on the legacy in their family. So we started Simply Size Home. Um, and we're going to explain today, we're going to dive right in. We have many services in it all of it is now full um, scale uh, moving management, helping people with all aspects of moving. We're going to go through a quick punch list um, that uh, it highlights what our uh, services are. Um, and Liz will go through those so you can advance to the next couple of slides. There we are. <laughs> Ten years ago. Oh, dear. <laughs> so our services include downsizing and stuff management. Um, what do you keep? What do you sell? What do you donate? Um, how do we know the difference between donating and selling? Um, what things can be sold, et cetera? Moving management, which is the packing part. Um, we are insured and bonded and um can pack all your items for you. Resettling services. Once you get to your new house, we help you make your bed, stock your refrigerator, set your kitchen up so you have a safe and relaxing first night in your, your new home. And then if needed, we can help you prepare your house to go on the market, aka staging. Next slide. Okay, we're going to dive right in. So uh, this is not uncommon. A lot of people have uh, dumping grounds in their homes. It could be the attic, garage, an extra room. Everything goes into this room. You set it down, you turn around, walk out, and boy, you do not want to walk back in there or try and dive in and sort it because that just feels like a nightmare. So um, that's our job. We get in there, we make fast work of it. Uh, next slide. So we sort through everything um, and we're doing this kind of multitasking, multi-purpose. We are unpacking everything that folks have. We're categorizing it. This is not only for the family to come through and say, yeah, I was looking for those gorgeous orange plates with the gold rim, um, or no, I wasn't. Thank you for showing me all these things. Um, I, I will send pictures to the family to see if they want any. And then when, when we cross that bridge, it's now all set up for the antique dealers to come in. Uh, next slide. So you just saw pictures about stuff. Now we're going to transition into um, things that might move with you. The bigger things, furniture. What do you love? What do you need? And what are you going to take with you? So one of our first things after, um, we usually, we always start with a consultation, but this is after we've been hired. We're going to dive in and, and start with probably a furniture walkthrough, uh, comprehensive you know, do you want to take this dining room table and these chairs? Will it fit in your new place? Um, next slide. 
We are looking at people's uh, floor plans. Um, We're doing our best to troubleshoot based on what they want to take and will it fit. Uh, next slide. Here uh, I am on site. Uh, obviously, it is a work in progress. The house uh, condo is being built and we are troubleshooting. You can almost see the skepticism in my body language as the uh, person tells me they want an enormous roll top desk to fit through that skinny doorway. And I am thinking, uh -uh, I don't think so. But uh, that's what we're doing. We are troubleshooting for you. Uh, luckily, luckily, the other side of the room that you can't see has um, double door French door out to a lower level, which is an egress, but we can get the um, roll top desk through there. So we're constantly troubleshooting and helping to place furniture um, in your new space. Next slide. So once you have determined what you want to take to your new home and your family has decided what they would like, um, we will help you dispose of what remains in your house. So that's through auction, selling or consignment or donation. Sometimes there's trash as well. In fact, there's always trash. So um, in this case, this um, family was selling their piano. So we had a piano mover come in and remove it. Um, it went to, went to consignment. Um, next slide, please. This was a case where Furniture Friends um, was able to pick up a bunch of furniture as a donation to um, help with folks coming out of shelters in the greater Portland area. So this was a donation. Next slide. We use the ReStore Habitat for Humanity for a lot of things. Um, they will take tools, building supplies, furniture, artwork, um, so again, this is a donation, but they will come for free and pick things up. So we use um, the ReStore a lot. And we try to use charities that will pick up for free. Um, that's important to try to keep the costs down. Next, Next slide. slide. At the end of every job, there's always some trash. Um, mattresses are typically trash. Um, you know, things that have collected around the yard, perhaps, um, broken, you know, dehumidifiers, et cetera, that have collected. And at the very end of a job, we have our trash haul. Um, in this case, um, this was a big load, and um, but we like to do it at the very end before the cleaning's done. Next slide. So we're going to transition into the moving management piece. Once you have decided what you're taking, we start packing. Um, sometimes when we're staging the house, we do some pre-packing, um, but we are able to pack anything small to big. Here's a huge uh, piece of artwork. Um, next slide. We are carefully labeling where things uh, came from and what room they're going to. So it's super efficient for Preston and his crew to uh, place your things in what room they go in. And then we quickly start unpacking. Uh, next slide. Moving day is always super hectic. Um, I'm sure this looks uh, familiar to all of you. And in this case, the clients had already left. They were moving to North Carolina. We uh, went in after they left, uh, packed up everything. It was a very emotional move for them, packed up everything, oversaw the movers, and they were down uh, getting settled in their new place, visiting family and awaiting the truck, uh, which arrived a few days later. So we handled everything start to finish. Next slide. Uh, sometimes we have to troubleshoot. <laughs> this looks like everyone's worst nightmare with it coming out of the window. 
Sometimes that has to happen. But one way or another, if something went in, it's going to come out. And uh, that's why you want to have higher movers <laughs> as opposed to your uh, kids doing things um, or your college roommate. You probably have used up that card already. So uh, next slide. Once the moving truck has arrived at your new um, house, we quickly get started unpacking those boxes. Um, we are unpacking a kitchen here. You'll see that a lot accumulates um, of trash and we um, make sure that we, we take all of that when we leave at the end of the day, all boxes, all paper. Um, Martha is resettling a kitchen here. Next slide, please. Again, we'll put you know the, the cold food back in the refrigerator, in the freezer, um, part of our resettling. Next slide. Okay, we're gonna talk quickly about staging. Staging is a scary word to some. Um, Sandra is going to speak to the importance of uh, the value of your house, a list price, et cetera, relating to staging. So I'm going to skip that. Uh, staging is literally preparing your house to go on the market. When we do a walkthrough, we are looking for things cosmetically and structurally to point out. Um, sometimes we need to hire painters, um, have old carpet sometimes taken out. It all depends what your budget is. Uh, pointing things out that may be red flags for buyers uh, coming through. That is our job and to point these things out and... Um, we uh, can talk through that during a consultation or when we're working together. Next, so next slide, please. Uh, you wanna depersonalize your home. You want surfaces clear. Uh, you want folks to be able to picture themselves in your house and look at the attributes of the structure of your house, not your cute grandchildren that are on the refrigerator. Um, or uh, looking at your collectibles. Uh, next slide. This is a perfect example. This was a, um, a sunroom. There was water damage all over the cushions um, running right down the front of the face of that uh, seat. We uh, fixed the screen. We redid new covers for the cushions for $240. Um, and it wiped out the idea for a buyer that the roof needed to be replaced, which in their mind was uh, coming up to a total of about $50,000 expense to them. So next slide. Here's the end result. Um, wiped out that red flag for buyers and uh, increased the perceived uh, value of that that room and that house based on not having to spend for a new roof. Uh, next slide. Um, we are an accredited moving management company. We're part of the National Association for Senior Move Managers. Um, we had to take classes for this, um, for this recognition. Um, and this is a, a, a program, um, a, I don't know, an accredited um, <laughs> group it's national. of people that's national. And we are able to use them from time to time when someone is moving out of state and needs help resettling wherever they're going if we're not able to follow them. So, um, you know, we use this as a resource that we give our, our clients that um, you can go online and um, find other senior move managers that can help you as well. So where you're going. Next slide, please. This is our team. We've grown quite a bit since then. We now have a Camden division. Um, so, um, you know, it's made up of men and women and um, we all love what we're doing. Next slide, please. So there we are. That is us in a nutshell. We want to thank Ocean View and Cumberland Crossing. We have moved in so many people into their community. I was at Cumberland Crossing yesterday with a move there next week. 
we walk around and recognize uh, people the, in the neighborhood, on their boards, in the hallways, and it's a huge community to us and to folks that live there. It is great. Um, so thank you to them. Um, it's a wonderful community, and uh, we look forward to answering any questions that you may have at the end of presentations. Thank you for listening to us. Hey, ladies, thank you so much. I do have a couple of questions that came through while you were speaking. And as I said at the onset, if we get more, we'll, we'll, we'll set up a time at the end as well for people to ask questions, not just of the last speaker, but anyone who has, um, has spoken. So the first question I wanted to share was how are, in your case, um, how are these services charged for, flat fee or hourly? Um, how we, do you happen to charge in that? We regard? charge hourly. We're $75 per person per hour. And from uh, the items that someone may be selling, they we've had people that have sold hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of things. We take no portion of any proceeds from anything that is sold. We set you up with vetted and reputable honest um, resources. Again, we consult in that fashion. We take no portion of the proceeds. So we are labor um, and hourly. And there are outside costs, like when you uh, hire movers um, or trash haulers. But um, that is how we charge. Um, and again, no portion of any proceeds from anything sold. Um, I think I know the answer to this one, but I'm going to let you do it. They, someone asked, can they choose? Can they sort of cherry pick? What they want you to do that it, you don't have to do the soup to nuts you can you will work with people who have very specific needs is that right absolutely um so you know you may feel like um family can help you get through the packing part of it or um you know you need help with selling items you can contact us we can um help you with any part of of the services that we offer so and this next question kind of goes hand in hand. Um, someone who I know from out of state who will be moving into Cumberland um, in the coming month or years. Um, can you help people who are out of state, like say Colorado, find a similar organization to help on that end? And that is part of that organization that you're a part of. So it would, Correct. you could help someone on both ends, like connect them with the place in their own hometown, but then also be of help when they get here. Yes. And so Colorado is quite a ways away, but if someone, we have people twisting our arms if they're in New York state and they want us to go there and come here or vice versa here to there. Um, we do do orchestrate things absolutely out of state, but um we haven't gone as far as Colorado. Just and, to, you know, we could put them in Washington. touch with, with someone in Colorado through the um, National Association of Senior Move Managers. And then what we would do is take care of them when they get to Ocean View, we would help resettle them and stuff. Right. Um, someone, I've had a couple of people say, is your consultation to, to start the process a free consultation or do you charge for that time? Nope, that is free. That okay. is free. Yep. yep. Awesome. Um, and then this question, I this might be part Preston, and, and we'll see what you guys say. Um, a moving company told us self-packed containers are not covered by their liability insurance. If you pack, does that mean the things you pack are not covered, or do you have your own liability insurance? We absolutely have our own liability insurance. Um, and it, we have never had an issue. We're covered. It's almost as if they're covered twice. But if something is dropped in the box is all smashed and correct me if I'm wrong, Preston, that's on the moving end of things. If, we, if there's something in a box that's broken and the box is uh, absolutely perfect, that's our, our issue. Um, so you're kind of almost covered in two different fashions. Um, but we are a hundred. We are covered uh, and bond, bonded, so completely insured. Yep, That's everything they said. Yeah, unless unless there's visible damage to the carton, uh, like like she said, everything would be would be all set. Yep. 
Um, and then someone said, do, do you do the moving or does Pre Preston, I, I'm assuming you work with Preston and his company any number of times, but you might work with other moving companies as well. Mm -hmm. Do you actually do moving yourselves or do you always connect out? We, we do not uh, pick up the furniture. We organize everything. So when these guys get in there, it goes very quickly, smoothly. Um, it, yeah, it, there's nothing like, and Preston will say this, his team arriving and everything is in disarray. It ends up being complete chaos and costs a client a lot more uh, because it's not all buttoned up and ready for these guys. Right. Okay. Well, Kim and Liz, thank you so much, both of you, for doing this. And um, I, like I've told everyone at the onset, um, we use this recording quite often to be helpful to our future residents. And so thank you. We appreciate you taking the time. Thank um, you. Karen. So now I'm going to ask um, them to turn off their cameras and their microphones um, and introduce Sandra Wendland to you. She is with uh, Legacy Properties, Sotheby's International Realty. Um, and with that, you can imagine there is a huge reach um, with what Sandra can bring to the table. So certainly if you are not in our market, that's not a complete issue because I'm sure she can help you if you are coming from another state. I know she has pals across the country because she used to live across the country, but she's been here for quite some time and can really bring a, a great eye and a great understanding of the real estate market, not only here, but across the, the country because of the connections that um, Southern Sotheby's provides to their, their brokers around the country. So I'm going to introduce to you Sandra. Um, she has uh, the Herculean task of trying to do this in 15 minutes, as she tells us all the time. It's really hard um, because she really covers a lot of bases, but we're going to try to keep it to 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll do what we just did now and we'll ask questions of Sandra when she's done. So I'm going to turn my camera off and let Sandra take it from here. Thank you, Sandra. Great. <clears throat> thank you so much, Shereen. And thanks for everybody for being here today. As she mentioned, I relocated uh, six times across the country and all over the place. So I know all the strains, stresses, and what goes into <clears throat> moving, um, wondering what your house is worth. And uh, my background was corporate finance. And about 20 years ago, after a few not so great real estate experiences, I decided to go into real estate. So um, I'm coming up on 20 years this year, and I'm going to give you a quick overview. Um, and I certainly welcome any phone calls after the presentation, because sometimes real estate, you end up with very specific questions um, and uh, happy to meet with anybody, even, even if you're out of state. <clears throat> so I'm going to share my screen here. And here we go. All right, can everybody see that okay? Um, right now I'm going to start with the presentation of what's happening in the main real estate market. And what is really important to understand as I go through some of the slides is the main market is kind of like the main weather forecast. You're reading about everything in the newspaper right now and sometimes you see this is what's happening in the real estate world. Um, Please don't take that to heart. Always talk to somebody who's local and um, really tone it into your local market because it could be 80 and sunny in California and it could be snowy in Maine. Um, and that's kind of same similarities with the real estate market. So um, I am a global real estate advisor. I work with realtors across the country and around the world. I meet with them on a weekly basis and I'm a local real estate broker in Maine. I have worked with folks even as low as 97,000, I think was my lowest real estate transaction up to 10 million plus. So I've got a huge uh, range of knowledge. And really what I focus on is helping folks determine what the value of their property is. And then making the game plan as to when's the right time to move, what do we need to do to gap that bridge, which you'll be hearing um, from Bath Savings next, and um, really make that transition for you smooth and easy. Last year when I gave this presentation, I had some predictions for 2022, um, and it was that the inventory was going to remain low in the real estate market. Um, real estate uh, interest rates for mortgages would still remain quite favorable, and buyers would have some good buying power, and um, prices would continue to rise. Little did we know going into last year that the interest rates would 
creep up as far and, and uh, exceed 7%. But they did throughout the year. And we had some little blips in the radar up and down on the real estate market. But overall, um, pricing continued to increase. Coming into 2023, um, I think it's really important for you to understand that we're not likely to see any sort of housing crash or housing bubble, but the inventory is going to start gaining momentum throughout the year. We're seeing it in markets across the country. Um, Maine is still rel relatively low inventory, um, but we feel that the inventory will be gaining momentum. Um, pricing probably by mid-summer is going to start leveling out. And um, buying power is going to still be somewhat limited as interest rates um, have really increased and have remained at a higher level. Uh, continuing with that, um, we are continuing to see bidding wars, um, which as I predicted, and I think we're going to continue to see that probably all the way up into the summer market. Inspections will be back. We Buyers have been very generous the past couple of years. They needed homes, and so they were waiving their home inspections. They were waiving appraisals, and it created a little bit of a frenzy. Um, and we're starting to come back into a little bit more of a normalized market. Um, and then, you know, we're always going to continue to see some cash buyers out there. And in Maine, we still have a huge out-of-state buyer market. So we think that they will still continue to come. Um, for those folks that are currently working at home, but the people looking for second homes, we're, I believe we're going to start slowing down a little bit on that market. Um, and uh, only time is going to tell what's going to happen with this year's market. This is just a little snapshot of um, what the market looks like today in Cumberland County. I've taken the last 13 months, year over year, and surprisingly to some people, sales prices are up 13% over last year. Um, so we saw some really strong gains last year in the real estate market. Uh, our inventory is down over 14% year over year. So when we start looking at that, um, you know, what, what that shortage of inventory is doing is it's allowing home prices to continue to remain high. And until we start seeing some corrections um, with that, uh, prices should stay pretty strong. If we drop down here with the month supply of inventory, we have a, roughly a month supply of inventory. A normalized market is when we see six months of inventory. So folks are still selling their homes in about eight days or even less. And we're selling homes at or above asking price is the average. So some really good, strong numbers for the sellers at this point. Um, this was just released yesterday. Um, if we are looking at um, February 2023 only compared to February 2022, you'll see that the units sold, meaning the number of homes or condominiums sold in the state of Maine, was actually down 19%. So that's a huge number for us. Um, that's 170 less properties available for sale than a year ago. Um, yet the sales price was up 10.67%. So really great things happening if you're a seller right now. Uh, I really like to go back and point out um, what happens in our real estate cycles. If we come back here to 2016, if you bought a home in the 225,000 range, um, you now have a property that's probably worth about 505,000. So if you've owned your property for that short period of time, you've seen significant gains. And I also want you to take note that there's these little blips every year. Um, and they always happen usually late winter, early, um, early winter into, uh, you know, sorry, let me reverse that. Late in the year, um, which is our early winter, and then um, first of the year coming into spring until that market and inventory starts to creep up. And then we see a spike every year. So we have now just hit a downturn from the end of 2022, and now we're spiking back up again. So still the market is remaining extremely strong here. Uh, with Freddie Mac, who is a primary uh, mortgage lender within the US, we have interest rates hovering in the 6.6 .6 range. If you are, you know, Gene's going to speak to interest rates, I were seeing some portfolio mortgages, a bridge loan, um, much more favorable than that. 
The biggest questions I've had in the past week, and I've yielded lots of phone calls, so I really changed out my presentation this year, is what does all this banking collapse stuff mean? Um, is it affecting the market? And at first, we did see some people put the brakes on um, as buyers getting a little nervous. Um, you know, I got to move some funds. I want to make sure my financial status is okay. But, you know, really the reality is there's plenty of people out there that need to buy homes and they will continue to buy homes. So we're not, my prediction of not seeing, um, you know, any real estate crash, I think we're going to stay really strong throughout the remainder of the year. If you're a seller who's been sitting on the sidelines, um, you know, our, our office is telling everybody time is your biggest risk factor right now because we don't know what's going to happen with the real estate markets. We know that they... Uh, currently remain strong and there's lots of interest, but um, only only time will tell what's actually going to happen. We do know the climate shifting just a little bit. Um, so we're not going to guarantee you that we can get you the same number in nine months from now for your home, but I think it's relatively safe uh, going throughout the summer months. And you know the reality is if you've owned your property long term, you've made a really fantastic investment. So I always want everybody to stay positive and look at this of saying, well, it might sh slow down a little bit. We're probably not going to lose much in value. We might lose multiple offers. But when you come to sell your home and the time is right, you're still going to do very, very well. Um, with the banking collapse, we have seen that the feds, um, as you probably have all read, have continued to raise rates this year to try and drown out inflation. Now they're caught up being pulled between economy reform um, and now the breakdown with the banks. So we really don't know what's going to happen with rates. Um, we expect that they may be in the high sevens or even in the eights by the end of the year. But right now it doesn't seem to be deterring any buyers in our market. So we call it a watchful eye to see what's going to happen. And again, uh, you know, just, just that timing, um, I think this year will continue to be a strong market and those who are currently employed, um, some of them were hearing a little nervousness, but I, overall, I don't feel it's going to um, impact the market too much. So we're going to take a little shift as to what buyers are actually looking for. And I will tell you that buyers today are much pickier than they were five years ago. Um, and it's interesting, they really are gravitating towards these turnkey properties. It's all about lifestyle, location, and it's not necessarily the size of the home. Um, given it's been difficult to find contractors and the cost of construction have risen substantially, the homes that need a lot of work tend to sell close to asking price if they're priced right. But if they need a lot of work, um, those are the homes that are going to languish on the market just a little bit longer. Um, buyers today are all about life experiences and sometimes they want a condo over a home or they want a smaller yard or they don't want too big of a house that they have to maintain in heat. Um, so homes with good yard space um, that are pretty turnkey are the ones that are selling quickly. And many buyers are coming from out of state because they continue to work from home. So having some space or even a large primary suite where they can throw in a desk so they're not disrupted by their family to work are all very positive things. And as a real estate broker, when I meet with someone for the first time, whether it be on Zoom or in their home, we go through, I usually will say, give me a little tour of your house. Um, <clears throat> and we'll go through and look at what can we do to maximize the value and the space in your home that makes it the most attractive to a buyer. So um, we're also looking at um, what are the punch list items and what are the little things that you should repair. And there are certainly um, little items and we're going to go over them in the next slide. But most buyers walk in a door and if they see something that's, um, you know, a little bit rusty or a door handle that's loose, they start really questioning, well, what else did they not maintain in this property? So it's really important that we, um, so I don't know why that popped up. It's really important that we 
continue to make sure that we are taking um, good care of you and making sure that we are making sure that your property is just pristine and perfect for them. So the items that are broken, torn, loose, rusty are all the little things that you should be looking at. Um, if you have an awkward layout, don't worry about it. We can stage it. We can, it's amazing the things you can do. Because I'm limited on time, I didn't put on all the slides, but I have turned uh, dining rooms into family rooms or playrooms, or we will go through your house and make sure, any broker will make sure that we are setting your home up for success. If you need painting, it might be that you have really neutral paint colors throughout the house, and then you decide a little pop of color in the kitchen or a little added color in your bathroom, or we've had a lot of textured paintings over the year, we might recommend doing some neutralization on painting. We'll help you with all that. Liz and Kim are also great. And even if you're out of the area, I can connect you with a real estate broker that will go through all of this with you and um, help you make all the right decisions as well. Um, other things that, you know, a house that's squeaky clean always is nice, um, re but remodeling your kitchen, putting in a new driveway, updating bathrooms, you're just not going to get the return on those items. So just make sure that you're consulting anyone before you decide to spend uh, any big ticket money. <clears throat> When it comes to pricing your property, uh, it's important that we look at all the attributes of your home, how it compares to other properties that have sold. So your local real estate broker, if you're not in Maine, um, spends a lot of time touring other homes, even if they didn't represent the buyer or the seller in them, making sure that when it comes to price your home, they are comparing apples to apples. And it's really important to come up with realistic pricing. Um, overpriced homes sit on the market. I've been in this business for 20 years, um, and they really tend to sell for about 14% less than had you priced them right to begin with. We are starting to see that a little bit in our main market that um, sellers have gotten a little bit greedy. And so they're kind of shooting for the moon on some, some pricing. And we do see those homes sit on the market. Um, and more importantly too, there is a huge risk of not selling in a hurry. If you have the mindset of, oh, well, I'll put it on the market. And if it sells in a few months, that's great. Um, that really devalues your property. There's been a lot of research done and you will actually net about 70% um, of the sales price that you would have achieved had you priced it right to begin with and really motivated yourself. It's also important to know that um, the not in the hurry um, status is, isn't a great one um, because then you're also ex exposing yourself to a lot of people every day in and out of your house. Um, and then when it comes to staging, um, we take each house in uh, look at it differently. And there's a marketing plan designed for each home, depending on the property. We have a lot of options. Sometimes I have a professional stager come in. Sometimes I look at all your furnishings and say, this is great. I'm going to move all this around and we'll do it ourselves. I just did that last week with one of my clients. Um, and then you might be in a situation right now where you say, I want to sell my property, know that I have our, um, everything ready to go, throw it in a rental and or throw it into storage and be in a rental for a little while. Some people choose that option, but then there's the people who say, I just don't want to deal with that hassle. And I want to um, get established at Ocean View and get my bridge loan and then put my home on the market because we know your home is going to sell. You will be successful. So if you're in that mindset, we can actually allow you to move all of your goods out of your home. And there's something called virtual staging. Um, virtual staging, you would not even know that is not real furniture. We've got some great vendors um, and we can use that photography with the virtually staged um, home. Um, on multiple listing, we take a picture of say your living room, your bedroom, your you know your whole house empty. I send off those photos to my vendor, and they come back looking like a beautifully staged home. So there's um, really depends on what type of property you have of whether or not we should be looking at staging it. Um, I 
pulled some questions together that I always get asked after these presentations. Um, and I think this is an important one of, do you believe your home will sell for a fixed price or based on the marketing and negotiation skills of your realtor? I can't stress enough how important it is for you to work with a um, experienced realtor right now. Our markets have changed um, and an experienced realtor will easily net you anywhere from twenty dollars to $100,000 or even more on the sale of your home. And you say, well, how can that be? Um, it's possible because they're going to price your home right. They're going to make sure it is whether it be staged, it's got professional photography, it's going on the internet, just pristine. And then when it comes to negotiating, um, it might be that now we're back to inspections, there might be some items that need to be negotiated. And if they're skilled, they know how to negotiate. They've negotiated inspections many times in the past, where brokers who have come into the market the past couple of years, um, they've never had to negotiate inspections. So it is really important right now to make sure you've got somebody who's skilled. And absolutely, they your home is not going to sell for... Um, a fixed price. It's going to be based on the quality and the ability of your real estate professional. Um, the next question is, do you believe you can underprice your home or overprice your home? And I get all sorts of interesting answers on this one, but really the most important thing I cannot stress enough is making sure that your property is priced right where it needs to be. And the best comparison I can ever make is if you go and you're looking to buy a gallon of milk and there are four different types of milk, all 1% on the shelf, and one of them is 60 cents cheaper than the other one, most people are going to gravitate towards the one that's 60 cents cheaper than the other one. So same thing in the housing market. Um, people, there is a buyer perception of value. And when buyers perceive value, they tend to really get fixated on a property. If a home is overpriced, um, we used to see this a lot, and I think we're going to start seeing this more in the future market. If a home is overpriced, they will feel it's overpriced and they will tell their real estate broker to let them know when there's been a price reduction and maybe they will consider that property. So um, you absolutely can overprice your home and it can be harmful. And I think the most important thing is whenever, I think this is true for every person I meet with, uh, I go into their home and they'll say, well, my home is special. Mine doesn't compare to the other ones on the market. Um, I agree. Every house is special. Um, even my own house, I would say the same thing. But remind, you know, it's really be mindful that um, homes on the market paint a pretty picture of the, the actual numbers. And we're going to massage those numbers to make sure we're getting you the top value. But trust Trust your real estate broker when it comes to um, pricing your property. Um, and then the next one is, do you think I can sell my home? Absolutely. Um, if you ask me this question if, a year from now, I will also say absolutely. Um, every home is saleable. Um, it's just a manner of making sure that you have prepared it accurately, priced it right, and have a really good marketing plan, and um, you'll you'll do fantastic. So sometimes um, it's helpful to review your real estate owned, your financial uh, financial investments. If you have a financial planner, if you're looking at doing bridge loans, um, but any seasoned real estate professional can help you with all that. And really, it, it, I always say it takes a village. So uh, make sure that you work with people that can help you out on that. Um, the other thing is buyers always, you know, overpay and sellers always sell for less than the property's worth. I hear this all the time from my buyers and I hear it from my sellers. Um, buyers really set the value. Um, your home's only going to sell for what a buyer is willing to pay for it. So that's that's important to know. And buyers are very smart and educated these days, and they will um, look at comps. They'll ask um, good questions. They'll have their buyer brokers looking at things. So just keep those little things in mind. And don't ever lose a deal over 1%. Um, I've had people dig in their heels get stubborn um, and say, oh, I really don't want to fix this or I don't want to do that. Um, you know, selling your home is a big transaction for most people. It is their largest investment um, in the their entire life. And it is important to make sure that you are getting good advice 
um, and you're doing the right thing. And 1% in, in the grand scheme of selling house usually is a pretty small number. Um, and if you decide to be unreasonable, just be aware of the consequences because I've seen people um, be unreasonable blow up a deal and they ended up selling their house for you know twenty thousand dollars less 30 days later so really it's all about keeping egos in check um and making sure that when you're negotiating um that you're part of the negotiations with their real estate broker but you're really everyone's keeping the big picture in mind um real estate advising is something that i have done for years um, because I have a background in finance and most of my Sotheby's affiliates also um, have a lot of finance related backgrounds. We like to get into a home, whether it's in, in Maine or if you're uh, you know, throughout the country. Um, what we would do is we sit down with you and we go over, um, go over your property. We'll come up with a valuation for your property. We will look at what your finances look like, whether or not you have a mortgage that needs to be paid off, how we paint the picture to get you from one place to the next place. And we will map out a plan for you. Um, sometimes your financial advisor may say, now's not a good time to, to liquidate um, some stocks and bonds. Um, and so those are also big picture things to making sure that we're making the right game plan for you. Sometimes we work with folks for three years because it it's starting that process and understanding when is the right time to make that move. Sometimes it's quick and they're ready to go and they've already looked at these items, but there's sometimes there's tax consequences with there's a life estate involved or um, you know if you're already in a trust. So we will walk you through all those little things that you need to know. Um, so it is really important. Um, I do see a question over here that I can, let me just pop over to. Um, and it says, we have an offer from an out of state that is high relative to local values. The potential buyer is pre-approved but plans on 90% loan. Do we need to be concerned that the bank will not give the loan because the offer is high to relative, um, relative to the real estate values? Um, I will tell you that um, Susan, since you're the one who sent that, please give me a call and I will have a conversation with you in depth after this after this meeting today. Um, my phone number is on the last slide. Um, I will quickly address that though. We are running into situations where, um, you know, banks are starting to tighten up a little bit and homes don't always appraise for the price that they um are listed for or the price of the contract. So when I'm representing a seller, what I look for in that situation is I look to protect my seller to make sure that that deal is going to be solid and it's actually going to close. And I do that by um, putting in language that the buyer would be willing to cover any appraisal gap um, funds. So if the property didn't appraise for the full value and say it's under appraised by $50,000, the buyer would have to come up with an additional $50,000 cash in your situation. Um, it it kind of looks like um, we should probably have an offline conversation. I can go into that a little bit further for you. And we're just, let me just pop back over here. And as an attendee today, I will do a free and in-depth consultation with any of you, whether it be here in Maine or if you want to have a Zoom meeting, talk about your specifics. Um, I got into real estate after having a few bad real estate transactions as a relocation buyer slash seller a few times due to corporate relocation. So I know what it's like. Um, and my motto is all about providing the best level of service I possibly can and making this transition for my clients as easy and as simple as possible. So I'm always here. Um, even if it's in a year from now and you say, oh, I remember her, pick up the phone, call me, shoot me an email. It would be my pleasure to answer any questions. Um, but with the consultation, we can certainly go through through um, everything it would um, take to make you successful in transitioning to a new home. That's awesome. Sandra, thank you for that. Um, I know that our attendees appreciate that offer very much. There was one other question, though, that I think you kind of answered, should your home be shown furnished or unfurnished? Um, and you kind of talked about it all depends, right? 
Yeah, it really depends on the property, what size the property is. Um, I represent developers sometimes and I do new construction. And many times I just virtually stage the homes. Um, but other times I do pay for a company to come in and professionally stage um, the kitchen, living room, dining room, and a primary bedroom. Um, but it really depends on the property. Um, and then we have another question here. My home recently had a bank appraisal. Do you find that bank appraisals and actual sales prices are relatively similar? It all varies on who the appraiser was. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of fluctuation and I could have five appraisers come and appraise the same house and get all different values. So um, I always say never fully rely on that appraisal um, when it comes time to either selling your home or if you're doing bridge financing and they need to do an appraisal, um, that's going to be your most accurate appraisal because that's what the lending will be focused on. Um, there was another question that I think you've already answered, which is what do you charge for advising? But you've offered this wonderful offer to, to our um attendees. So I'm not going to worry about that one. And we'll just... I will tell you any real estate broker should never charge you for advice. Um, and I am on Zoom calls right before this. I was on one with 50 brokers from across the country. We network and we talk about our markets and we share clients all the time. So if you are out of the area and you need someone, please let me know because chances are I know somebody in your market that would be helpful to answering your market specific questions. And then we'll just do this one final question. Um, and then we'll, like I said, we'll come back afterwards. And if you think of something for Sandra at, after Jean and um, Preston have spoken, then we can revisit with her. But can you give some advice on what type of landscaping efforts will add value to a home? It all depends on where you live. Um, if you're in Maine, I would recommend that we fluff up your mulch and plant some uh, fresh flowers and just give it a nice friendly feeling. Um, you don't have to do a lot. And I will tell you, I sold a professionally landscaped, impeccable, impeccably landscaped home um, in 2018 in Falmouth, where Ocean View is. And the people who bought my home, it wasn't their style of landscaping. And I drove by 60 days later and it was all ripped out. So don't spend a lot on landscaping. Um, we just need to make sure that it has a nice entry. Excellent. Sandra, thank you so much. I know we gave you the Herculean task here to like go through the banking crisis and everything else, um, but we'll have you turn off your uh, mic and your video. And like I said, we will um, invite all of our speakers to come back at the end and we'll answer any other questions. But now I have a pleasure to, my pleasure to introduce someone I've known for a very long time and full disclosure, um, the bank uh, for which Jean works is one that is my personal bank and has been for 30 years, I think. Um, and she, uh, the bank was a former client of mine in a previous life. Um, but I will say that I call Bath Savings Institution, where Jean is coming from today, um, the Cheers Bank of Southern Maine. They know your name when you walk in, like Norm, like a Cheers. They they always know you, and they they that's part of their value system. So I'm always excited when I get to go visit the bank. But more importantly, I think Jean today, as um, the vice president of retail mortgage lending she's going to be able to to explain to you some of the, the machinations around the financials. Like, how do you, I have to sell this house before I can buy my house at Ocean View or Cumberland. How do I do that? How do I do that with the, la, the, the least amount of tax implications and everything else? So I'm going to let Jean sort of walk you through what's available and whether you are here in Maine and can work with Bath Savings or if you're somewhere else, I think that what she's going to share today will be something you could take to your local banker or wherever you are and say, this is what I need to try and do. How can you help me? But she'll give you the right words to, to put in front of those bankers. So I'll let Jean take it. Thank you, Shereen. And good afternoon to you all. It's a pleasure to be here to spend some time with you. Um, and this afternoon, we're going to be talking about financing and how can we bridge that gap um, from the time that you are moving to Ocean View and selling your home. Next slide, please. When talking um, about doing a bridge loan, um, we're going to talk about a few things today, finding that financial partner, um, 
knowing that you're just looking for a short-term loan that is collateralized by your primary residence or your second home. You'll want to check with your bank or credit union to make sure they offer bridge loans and make sure um, that they can um, do the loan within your market area. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we go forward. Next slide, please. So the first loan I'd like to talk to you about is a home equity line of credit. This line of credit would be put in place based on the equity that you have in your home. Banks usually lend up to 80 to 95% of the value minus any mortgages that you currently have on the property. And I've given you an example on my um, presentation today of how that's calculated. If you're on the wait list or you're just beginning talks with the folks here at Ocean View, this is a loan that you can start working on now, get in place so that the funds are ready. So when you get that call from Shireen that the property is ready, your financing will be ready. Um, you do not pay any interest until you start to use the loan. Once the loan is advanced, then you'll be obligated to pay an interest only payment monthly until your current home has sold. Rates are usually variable and they're indexed with the prime rate. So anytime that you hear on the news that the Federal Reserve is increasing or decreasing the prime rate, that's when you will know that your rate will um, be changing. Terms are usually set for 10 years for a home equity line of credit. But in this case, obviously, it will be just as soon as your home is sold, that's when this line will be paid off. There are also closing costs associated with the line of credit, and those will vary. Value of the home, that is determined by either a real estate evaluation or an appraisal, depending on the amount that you're requesting. Home equities are a mortgage, and again, it's on a primary or second home. And usually the turnaround time to get one of these types of loans in place is anywhere between three to four weeks. Again, products, rates, closing costs, and turnaround times will vary depending on um, which lender you choose to work with. Next slide, please. So the next loan that we're going to chat about is a traditional bridge loan. There are a few differences between a traditional bridge loan and a home equity line of credit. The bridge loan um, has a maximum term of one year. So you would need to buy and sell your home in order for this loan to be paid off within a year. The other difference is with the line of credit, you advance it when you need it. With a bridge loan, um, those funds are fully advanced once your three-day right of rescission has ended. And that three-day right of rescission is put in place any time that you're financing your primary residence. Not a second home, but your primary residence. And this gives you three days after the closing to change your mind on financing should you wish to do so. Rates are still adjustable and based again on that prime rate. And the turnaround time for a bridge loan tends to be a little bit longer with around four to six weeks. And then again, that debt would be paid off once your current home sells. Next slide, please. Um, regulations do affect all banks. Um, so when we're talking about appraisals, if you are looking to have an appraisal done on your property and you know that you're going to need financing, I would visit your lender first um, and have them order the appraisal so that it can be used for your future financing. If you order it, um, in most cases, banks are not able to use that because it was done for the benefit of you as the customer um, and not for the benefit of the bank. Um, another regulation is if you're looking to borrow 400,000 and one penny or more, um, a full appraisal is required. Um, if it is less than that amount, then there are other options um, deter to determine value. As I mentioned previously, there is that three-day right of rescission 
um, that again, that is on all principal residents, and that is something that cannot be waived unless you have a bona fide medical emergency. And in my 20 years here at Bath Savings and my seven years prior to that at another financial institution, um, we only had that um, be able to be waived once. So it's not something that is common um, and happens very often. And also just a reminder, all products, rates, closing costs, timeframes will vary depending on the financial partner um, that is going to be helping you with your financing. Next slide, please. Just to give you some ideas of what you might have to gather. So as you're, you know, if you're in the process of packing, you know, some things away, um, you might want to just keep these things handy um, as you know that you might need them for your application. Um, tax returns and 1099s for the most recent year filed. A recent pay stub and W-2s if you're still employed. Social Security and pension award letters showing that you, what your monthly income is going to be. Full bank and investment statements, most recent. Contact information for your homeowner's insurance agent so we can verify that you have insurance on your current home. And again, there may be additional documents that a lender may need um, after reviewing your request in your application. Slide, please. When, once your application has been submitted to a lender, their review process is going to be looking at your credit history, make sure that your income is sufficient to support the payments that you are going to need to make, they're also gonna look at your assets to make sure that you have assets and income to, um, to rely upon um, should your income ever be interrupted. And then they're gonna look at the collateral, the collateral value on your primary or secondary home. Some lenders, um, going back to making sure you have income to support your loan request, some lenders will take into consideration income that you would receive from your investments on a monthly basis. But there are also lenders out there that just strictly look at the income that you receive from you know, employment, social security, pensions um, as qualifying. Next slide, please. So far, we have spoken about products um, if you own a home. The next option that we're gonna talk about is not a common option, but it's something that is out there that you could use if you don't currently own a home. This would be a bridge loan that would be we would use your investment portfolio for. So anything that you have with your financial advisor. Um, this is a great option if you don't want to liquidate your assets because of tax or capital gain implications. You would need to reach out to your investment advisor to see if the company offers this option. And I would start this option, um, this conversation sooner than later, as these loans seem to take a little bit longer um, and a little bit more complicated than just a traditional um, bridge loan on a home or a home equity line of credit. Um, again, products, terms, rates may vary. And then the biggest takeaway from an investment portfolio bridge loan would be retirement funds. Retirement funds are not an option um, and cannot be pledged for any loan of any type. Next slide, please. Just as Liz, Sandra, and Pre Preston have mentioned, it is important to find people that you can rely on to help you through this process. I will echo that, <clears throat> pardon me, I will echo that statement as well when it comes to finding a financial partner. The loan options that I've spoken about today are not uncommon. You can certainly, you certainly want to talk to someone that has an understanding of what your needs are. A great place to start is your financial institution where you currently, ha currently have a relationship with. Just make sure that the lender that you choose can lend in your area 
or state where you reside or where the property is located. For example, I get calls often um, from out-of-staters asking um, if we can help them with their, with their mortgage or with their you know, home equity line of credit or car loan. Unfortunately, um, as a community bank here, Bath Savings is only allowed to lend within the state of Maine. Um, but we always try to help them find a financial partner with a bigger community bank um, or a large commercial bank that might be in their area. Make sure your financial partner has an understanding of the process and timeline that you were under. I know sometimes, you know, when a unit becomes available at Ocean View, you have to act on it very quickly. So just make sure that they know what your time frame is um, and exactly what you're looking for for our product so that there's no last minute surprises. Next slide, please. Um, to conclude my presentation, I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Also, if you have specific questions related to you, I'm happy to speak um, with you um, privately as I know financial information, you know, is something that we all like to, you know, keep within a small group of people. So I'm happy to speak with you um, privately about any questions that you may have. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you to Ocean View for having us. Thank you, Jean. And I always appreciate your presentation because I know it's really helpful for folks. We did have someone ask if you could go over the, revisit the list of documents people will need for an appraisal or whatnot. But I'm gonna suggest that when, um, when this is over by the end of today or first thing tomorrow, um, my colleague, Dustin, We'll be sending out an e-blast to everyone who's on this call that you will get a copy of Gene's um, PowerPoint in that you'll get a link to that in your um, email from us. So rather than you feeling like you have to furiously write it down while, the, while it's up on the screen, just know that it will come to you later today or tomorrow. I had one other question that came up and that's, um, can you talk a little bit about when you should start so say you're going for a bridge loan. Um, should you be doing that while there's a for sale sign on your house or should you do that before? So that's a great question, Shireen. Um, some banks will not finance a property if it's currently on the market. So you're gonna need to reach out to your financial partner. I know here at Bath Savings, we do do um, bridge loans and home equity lines of credit on properties that are currently for sale. Um, as we know, again, there is that need to bridge that gap sometimes from the time that your home goes under contract, you need to move to your new home um, and the contract being finished and closing in the, with the sale of your home. So again, it's just checking with your financial partner um, to see if there's, if that's something that they allow. But I know there are some financial institutions out there that don't allow for that. Okay. Um, another question, do bridge loans and um, home equity lines of credit generally have the same interest rates or are they vastly different? Someone was asking. Yeah. So here at Bath Savings, our rates are the same for a bridge loan um, and a home equity line of credit. The reason why we offer two different ones is just depending on need. So if you're building at Cumberland Crossing right now, there are certain deposits that need to be made. So you might not need all the funds at once. But if you're buying a cottage, those are already built, you know, at Ocean View, um, and you may need all the funds at once. That's where the, the bridge loan can come into, might be a better product for you. Right. Um, so generally, they have the same interest rates, just the need for them is a little bit different. Awesome. I think that covers all the questions. Thank you so much, Jean. This was great to have you answer these. And I, I know that I've had people that I've sent your way who uh, in between these presentations have, have questions. And I know Jean's always very happy to, to help with them. Our last speaker today is Preston Hughes from Bisson Moving and Storage. Um, Preston is the third generation in his family to work in this moving business. So this is pretty cool. I think you're gonna bring some really interesting 
um, background to this, Preston. I know you've done this many times for us, and I thank you. I also know that before that you had a landscaping business, so you probably were chomping at the bit at the landscaping question that Sandra got. But um, I'm going to let um, Preston take it from here because he'll he'll talk to you about. Obviously, it'd be great if you are local and you want to work with Bisson. He'd be happy to talk to you. I know that, but he's also going to give you some ideas if you don't live locally, what you should be thinking about and doing when you're preparing um, to make the move. So, Preston. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for everyone tuning in and hanging on through the end here. Um, a little bit about myself, like um, like Shreen said, I've been in the moving business for pretty much my whole life. And my father was a mover and still is, um, and grandfather. Um, we've seen a lot of changes the past few years with COVID. And a lot of what we do now is uh, we can actually do over video that before was either on-site appointments and I'd be driving all over the state looking at people's houses and getting them estimates. Um, so it's really broadened our reach, so to speak. And this webinar is also a great, great tool for people that are out of state, maybe moving to Maine or in Maine, moving out of state. Um, there's a lot of great resources here and um, really appreciate you taking the time to, to tune in. and. Um, I will start sharing my screen. We've got a few slides to go through. Um, let's see. All right. Um, let me get my mouse over there. All right. Um, so a little bit about Bisson. Um, it was founded in 1919, right in Bath, Maine, by Lucian Bisson. He had a single horse drawn wagon with a with a buggy. Um, and today we have over 75 vehicles throughout the US and Canada um, that are running household goods, freight loads, uh, flatbed loads. We we do home delivery. Um, so if you ordered a new treadmill that UPS isn't gonna deliver, there's a good chance it's gonna come to our warehouse and we'll deliver it out to your home. Um, so we're, we're a local main company, but we have a, a big reach and we really have, have grown over the years. Um, we're an agent for Atlas Van Lines, which is one of the largest haulers of household goods in the US. Um, we're an award-winning agent for them. Um, we go to a convention every year and um, we're well known with, with the other agents and there's about 400 agents throughout the US. So if you are moving from Colorado. We have relationships with agents in Colorado that can help us if we need it. And they can also lean on us if they need our help. So it's it's a good network to be part of. And um, we we uh, it really expands our our reach and we can have someone come right to your house and do a walkthrough with you. It has the same background checks and uh, standards that we we hold our own crews to. Um, as I just said, all of our employees are background checked. Our, our moving consultants are certified with the American Moving and Storage Association and the American Trucking Association. Um, we're an asset-based company, meaning we don't, we're not a broker. We have our own trucks, our own crews, our own warehousing. Um, and we've been in business for over a hundred years, which in the moving business is, um, I would say quite an accomplishment because if you weren't doing something right, you just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't make it. Um, we have dedicated customer service teams. When you, when you schedule a move, you get assigned a move coordinator. Um, moves have a lot of, a lot of different parts and our, our teams work really well together and they will answer the phone when you call. Um, they'll help you go through the paperwork signing and, um, it's, it really gives an, a little extra peace of mind when you're stressed out at 10 o'clock at night and you send an email and you get a response first thing in the morning, or if you email me or call me, I'll usually answer, um, which drives my wife crazy, but I just how I am. Um, we have just over 90,000 square feet of warehouse space and, um, I'll get to storage in a little bit and that'll kind of you'll see why we need so much space for that 
Um, so now I'll talk about us a little bit. I like to explain to people what you should be doing when you're looking for a moving company. A lot of people have been in their homes for a long time. They, maybe they haven't moved in a long time or they've never done a long distance move. And there are so many scammers and and just it's it's easy to to make a wrong turn when you're planning a move um and so the the best best way to start i think is to reach out to a local company um and ideally one that is associated with one of the major van lines um and you know check their references ask them for names of people they've moved recently um you can look at reviews in the Better Business um, Bureau profile um, and just see, you'll, you should be able to see pretty quickly the real reviews and what people are saying. But if you can connect with someone that has moved with them and they can tell you what went right or what, what went wrong, there's companies out there that you can buy reviews and um, they're just, they're out there to, to rip you off basically. Um, and you, it's a good idea to do a in-person or a video walkthrough of your home. Um, this this is important so you make sure that your estimate is accurate and that it, it reflects the service that you're looking for. Um, if if you do a quick phone call with someone and say, "Oh, I've got a three-bedroom house," and they say, "Oh, well, it'll cost this much money," and then it's it's a big red flag because when they get there, they'll say, oh, this is more than what we talked about. This way you'll be able to know what's being moved and be in agreement with the moving company on what the expectation is. Um, and the other red flag is a lot of times if um, companies ask for a deposit upfront or when you book your move, the major van lines do not require deposits. And so that that is a red flag. and. Um, just keep an eye out for that because it's generally non-refundable. Um, so moving brokers are notorious for this. They advertise heavily online and they will get you a quick quote with a flat rate binding estimate. Um, but most of the time they don't look at what's being moved. Um, a lot of times they're out of Florida with a generic name like American moving or something like that. Um, they want to take a, a non-refundable deposit and they're, the, the thing with them is they're not actually a moving company. They're a broker. So what they do is they'll get you a price for your move and then they have to try and find someone to do the move for that price. And they just want the deposit. They don't care what happens after that. So they'll do a, um, an estimate for you based on, say, 5,000 pounds. And they'll find a mover to do the job for next to nothing. And then the mover will get there and they'll say, this is not 5,000 pounds. This is 10,000 pounds. And they don't want to load it. They'll require a new estimate and more money. Or they will load it, but they won't deliver it um, until you pay more. Um, and another thing that they do is they'll quote things based on the cubic feet instead of the weight. And you can you can hand a customer a weight ticket and say this is how much your your shipment weighed, but if you're doing it by the cubic feet, are you going to be able to look in the back of a tractor trailer and say, oh yeah, that's two thousand cubic feet? You can't you can't prove it, and it's it's a weight ticket. You need a, a paper paper copy that shows what was actually moved. They get a lightweight before it's loaded, and then a heavyweight after, and you can get a copy of that weight ticket or you can request to be present for the weighing of the truck. So it's it's all above board and the cubic feet is a big, big red flag. Um, and they generally want you to cancel the move um, so that they can keep the deposit. But um, it's it's something to keep an eye out for. And um, you, know, you always wanna start with the, the larger van lines. And if it's too good to be true, or the price is lower than um, the other quotes you've got, that's that's a red flag usually. Um, and you, you generally wanna get two to three estimates and make sure that they're all within the same ballpark. Um, so with packing, 
you have you have several options as a as a customer. Um, first option is for us to do all the packing for you, um, pack up the pictures, the contents of cabinets and shelves, uh, drawers, dressers. Basically, you just need to let us in and show us what you need moved, and we'll box everything up. Um, and then some people also would rather do a partial pack, and so they can pack their shoes and their books and you know crafts and stuff like that. Um, but they don't feel comfortable packing dishes or art or framed pictures, that sort of thing. Um, so we can come in and just just help with what you want done. Um, and then the last option is uh, what we call a pack by owner. And basically that's where you would have everything boxed up ahead of time um, and ready to go. And as someone mentioned earlier, um, hi Susan, um, the those items are not covered with the full value protection because we don't know the condition of the item or how it was packed for the move. Um, so if, if, if a dish was broken on delivery on a box that you packed, we don't know if the dish was already broken. So that's why some, sometimes if there's pieces that you're particularly concerned about, um, it's, it's better to just have us take care of it for you. Um, but we can provide several different estimates and, uh, show you what, what the different cost differentials are based on what level of service that you're looking for. Um, if you are doing your own packing, um, it's don't, don't skimp on the packing materials, buy more than what you need, um, and use, use paper like it's going out of style, um, or bubble wrap works well also. Um, you generally want to pack heavier items like books into the smaller boxes and then larger items like linens or uh, lampshades into large boxes. Um, you want to write on the top and side of the box um, with the room content, your last name, and uh, registration number or job number as well. Um, a lot of people will just write on the top of the box, but if you write on the side when the boxes are all stacked up, you can see what's in it without having to lift every box. Um, yeah, you can tell I've done this for a while. Um, it's also a good idea to have a dedicated parts box. That's where you put your remote controls, your wires, uh, the mouse for your computer, uh, screws for a table you took apart, anything like that. It's all in one place so you don't have to hunt for it um, when you're unpacking. Um, and then I recommend using actual moving boxes, whether you get them from U-Haul or um, you know Lowe's, it, it doesn't matter, but banana boxes, liquor boxes, um, they're, they're, they are a box but they're not ideal and banana boxes are open on the top and sometimes they have rotten bananas stuck on the bottom and um, it's better to buy uniform boxes and um, you'll, you'll have a much easier experience. Even though maybe you spend a little extra money on materials, it's well worth it. Um, uh, what we've had recently is uh, we've had to expand our warehouse space. A lot of folks have been listing their home and um, moving to Maine, but they're not quite ready to move into their new place yet. Um, so we have a uh, indoor storage facility and all of your items are stored. Um, they're inventoried, stored and pad wrapped um, in our heated warehouses. Um, and then these storage vaults, when it's time to deliver out of storage, we can load these right onto a truck, pull up in your front driveway, open it up, and deliver right out of the warehouse vault. So um, it limits the handling and everything as it comes off the truck, they read off the inventory number and you have a what's called a bingo sheet. And you check off that number and make sure everything's in the same condition as it was when we loaded it up, however long ago that was. Um, the storage is prorated daily. So you only pay for the, the actual length of time that you're in storage. Um, so if you go out on the fifth of the month, you're not paying for the entire month, you're just paying for the five days. Um, and I always welcome people if they wanted to schedule a tour and check out the warehouse space and see where, where everything would be kept. Um, you're welcome to come by anytime or um, even do a video walkthrough if you wanted. Um, it's it's pretty incredible space. It always reminds me of Indiana Jones um, where they store, store all that stuff. But um, 
the storage is always an option. And um, if you didn't want to store it at our warehouse, we can deliver it to self storage unit or anything like that as well. Um, so we're happy to accommodate whichever method you need. Um, generally, there's three types of estimates that you'll encounter. The first is a non-binding estimate. Um, and that's where the final price is going to be based on the actual weight and services. So it, the, the price might come out to be, um, you know, we packed 17 cartons and your shipment weighed 10,030 pounds. Um, and those are, those are good when you might not have a firm grasp on what you need done or maybe not everything in the house is going. Um, and they, they have a, a kind of a bad reputation, but they, I think as long as your estimate is accurate from the get go, there's nothing necessarily wrong with them. You just pay for the actual services. Um, the next type of quote is a binding quote. And that's where if the estimate said it was 10,000 pounds and we packed 50 cartons, that's what you pay no matter what. If it was 9,000 pounds and they packed 20 cartons, you still pay that full amount. Um, and a lot of people like that because it gives them the peace of mind. They know what the price is going to be. There's not going to be any surprises. Um, and that, that those are a good option. Um, and then the, the estimate type that I like to use the most is called the APP or an assured price protection, um, commonly referred to as a not to exceed. And those quotes kind of give you the best of both worlds. So if I give you an estimate for 10,000 pounds and the move is uh, 9,500 pounds, the price would be adjusted down to that, that amount. But if I estimated it was 10,000 pounds and it was 10,500 pounds, we wouldn't charge you for that overage. So it really is a good option. It protects you as a consumer um, and it holds us accountable as well to make sure we're, we're providing accurate estimates and we're standing by our price. Um, so if it's a little less, you pay a little less, um, but you don't have that worry of it being above that quote. Um, so when to start planning. Um, once you start getting the inkling that you might be putting your house on the market um, or you meet with a realtor, um, it's, it's a good idea to start the planning process then you can reach out even just to start the conversation. Hey, I, I talked to someone today that they may not be able to move until May, but they just wanted to get a feel for the process and start having those conversations. Um, we can do a walkthrough together um, anytime and I can make any adjustments. I'll send you a list of items. You can delete items or add items if you need. Um, and I oftentimes when people plan far in advance, I will do another walkthrough as we get closer just to make sure that everything is looking uh, like it was when we first discussed it. Um, and then uh, you can you can set a move date, but that's subject to change. I just with closings and things like that that are up in the air sometimes. So um but that's why we don't require a deposit and there's not a cancellation fee if you need to change the date or if um, for some reason the, the sale of your house fell through, um, there's no fees for, for canceling the move. Um, so yeah, thank you all for, for listening um, and thanks again to Ocean View. Um, I, I really like being a part of this and it's, it's uh, I met a lot of people over the years from across the country that are now calling Maine home and um, Really enjoy getting to be getting to be a part of it. So thank you. Thank you, Preston. That was great. I um I wrote down a couple of questions I just wanted to ask you, which was what what do you think the biggest mistake is that people make when they're getting ready to figure out moving, like the actual moving? Um, I think not being realistic and thinking um unless they call up some of the folks here like uh Kim and Liz, um they tell me that they're going to do all this packing and they're going to get rid of all this stuff. And um, it, it is a ton of work and they can really underestimate how much is involved with that. Um, and then the other thing is going with um, just the cheapest price that they can find. And, you know, you're talking about all of your possessions being loaded up on a truck with someone that you've met one time and you might save a few bucks but 
the peace of mind that you would get with going with a reputable mover is worth the extra money, I think. I was curious too, how long will you store items in your warehouse? And I know different companies would have different um, parameters, but how long are you all willing to store things for? Um, I know we have someone stuff in there from 1985 still. Well, um, I guess you keep it a long time if people want you to. Yeah, yeah, as long as you need it in here. Uh, it might be a little dusty when it comes out after 35 years, but we'll keep it. Yep. Oh, that's great. Um, I don't have any other questions, but I want to invite our other um, folks to come back on. I do have one question teed up for Sandra. Um, so Sandra, if you're coming back on board, uh oh, did we lose her? I don't see her. Hmm. Well, you know what, I'll make sure um, the person who sent this question, I'm just going to make a note of your name. And um, I will ask her to be in touch with you. And if we, um, oh, there she is. Sandra, you're there. Well, let me ask the question real quick while you're getting um, your mic and your video on. Um, what do you think about the estimates supplied by Zillow and Realtor.com? Realtor um, do you think they're accurate? Um, because buyers certainly are looking at them, this person said. So, yeah, they are not. Sorry, I lost my internet connection. So I had to relocate um, temporarily. They are not accurate at all. They are basically based on what um, towns have reported on assessment records. Sometimes people have manipulated them. So, you know, I've looked at my own house a few times and I can tell you that the value has been off um, over the past 20 years that I've looked at it um, anywhere from 10% to 50% off. So it is really important to have a certified market analysis done for yourself. I appreciate you answering that. Um, I don't see any other questions. I can keep it open for another minute or so, but I'll just take this opportunity to thank all of our speakers. Um, this is great information that you share and it's a great resource for the people that are looking to make Ocean View or Cumberland Crossing their future home. Um, we love being able to give them resources because it is one of the biggest decisions they're ever gonna make to make this um, a chapter in their lives. Um, we have a lot of residents here who will say it's the best decision they've ever made. Um, we hear that quite often. So I so appreciate you all being willing to help um, our future residents walk through this passage of one chapter to the next. And again, as I said earlier, um, if you have any questions about anything you've heard today, you will be getting all of the contact information for these people. Certainly, if you have questions for us at Ocean View or Cumberland Crossing, please always reach out to us. We, we love showing off our communities. We love answering your questions. Um, and we just wanna make people feel like they're making that best choice ever. So thank you again. Um, and we'll see you next year in person, I hope. <laughs> I hope we get to see these people live and in person next year. So thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you.